Hey, so I talked recently about how our agents perform a simplified version of interrupted time series in order to generate weights that represent user preferences. I'm going to put a link to that uh, post in the comments um, of this post, but what I want to talk about is one specific aspect of that. The, uh, long story short, if you wait all of the uh, events that you have in your app, you send a message, you do some kind of intervention, and then you sum all of the waits that occur in some window before the message and all the waits that occur in the same window after the message, the percentage of those waits that occur after the message can be interpreted as the probability that that message has positively influenced user behavior. Given that we have this percentage representation, you could just think, okay, well then, when the agent needs to make a decision about what to message next, just take the attributes that have the highest percentages and go with those. But we don't actually do that. And that has to do, the reason for that has to do with um, the beta statistical distribution. So what you can see right here on the screen is a distribution of success rates that represent a 50% probability of success. So if you flip a coin a bunch of times, half the time it comes up heads, there's your 50%. Now, notice that not all of these blue uh, bars are at the exact 50% mark. It actually runs from about 10% up through 90%. That's because any time, if you were to flip a coin an infinite number of times and it was a fair coin, yes, you would get a 50% uh, heads rate. But if you flip a coin a smaller number of times, you could actually stand a decent chance of getting all heads or all tails. This is what can happen when you are trying to predict a success rate. So when an agent predicts success based on historical measures, it's not dealing with a single probability, it's dealing with a probability distribution. Now what I wanna do is show you what happens as this probability distribution changes. If you estimate a 50% success rate, you can expect to see on average 50% success rate going forward. But depending on how many measures you do, you could see much fewer, much more. Whereas if you go up to say something like a 60% success rate, you can see that there are still cases where the, the real true preference could be 66% probability, but you could still see as low as something like a 20% probability just by chance. The spread of the distribution, the range from the lowest possible value to the highest possible value you could see. This is based on a what I call a signal strength of 12. Think of that as 12 coin tosses. So if you just run 12 different messages and you're basing your estimate of a user preference based on just those 12 messages, this is the kind of distribution you could expect to see. Whereas if you go up to something like 92 messages, it's a much narrower distribution, you're much, that 50% has a lot more confidence behind it because it has more evidence behind it. Go up to something really high and it gets even narrower, really, really close to getting that 50% and being sure that you're going to get it. Now, the really interesting part is if you go down to just two messages, two coin tosses, that is practically a uniform distribution. So based on very, very little evidence, the agent may come up with something like a 50% probability of success, but if it's based on that little evidence, it could actually be anything with equal, almost equal probability. That's why when our agents are asked to make a decision, say they are, have, an agent has an opportunity to message a user at Monday at nine o'clock, it's gonna have a tag associated with Monday nine o'clock, and it might have a 50% probability of success. However, that is not the only weight the agent is dealing with. It's also going to have a signal strength, and it is going to randomly draw from a beta distribution that is defined by that probability and that signal strength. So the more evidence it has backing its decision, the more confident it will be, and therefore the, the, the random draw from that beta distribution will be closer to what the actual percentage says. Whereas if there's very little evidence behind the probability, then it could actually draw something very, very different. This is how our agents navigate the explore-exploit trade-off. The higher the, the evidence behind a high score, the more likely that that high scoring option, whether it's a particular value proposition, a particular time of day, something like that, the more often that will get picked just from the random chain draw. Whereas if there's very little evidence behind it, 
there is a very good chance that it will get a very low random draw or a very high random draw, which could then include or exclude certain options that wouldn't normally be picked if we were just doing this naive ranking of success rates. This allows the agents to be creative and to be curious. Now, obviously a computer isn't creative or curious by itself, that's not a person, but this is what allows a computer to mimic the human quality of curiosity. It's all about embedding the information that the agent uses to make a decision into a statistical distribution and then randomly drawing from that distribution in order to make the final decision about what to message and when and how and to who.